a man is nursing his injuries in Nyeri County after his private parts were allegedly chopped off by his wife. It is believed that the couple fought when the man returned home in the morning after spending the night out. KTN senior reporter Carol Nderi has that story. A crowd gathered at the Kenny West police station last evening as soon as news filtered in that a man from Bellevue, Kiawara area in Nyeri County had lost his private parts after his angered wife attacked him, chopping off his manhood. His wife, a mother of two, is seen here in a police vehicle after her arrest as, as she was taken into the police cells. The agitated crowd yelled at her, condemning her for the act. Residents say the 40-year-old man had failed to go home the previous night and a fight ensued between the two when the suspect allegedly found condoms in the supposedly drunk man's pocket. The men gathered at the police station lashed out at the woman for severing the man's privates. Sisi atujui, tumekuna na ambulance hapa, wakasema kuna mwanomi ya mekato. Mwadhani. Tumesikia ya kwaba, kuna mwana umemoja, amekato wa sehemu nyeti na bibi yake. Ati, wae umuenda, sikubiri uja kuja. Lakini, ah. <laughs> the women too were not amused as they said they would not take it lying down that a few women in Nyeri were disparaging the reputation of the West. Ah, me ni kwa na daughter za kuwa huku Kiawara, yani kieni constituency, but better I keep ya. Chua na wake, tushuge sana hiyo mambo. Tusirudia. The man in question is said to be nursing his injuries at the Nyeri County Referral Hospital. We could not immediately see him when we arrived at the hospital yesterday as we were informed that he was in theater. The suspect was arraigned at the Nyeri Law Courts this morning and charged with beating and inflicting body injuries and offered a bond of 20,000 shillings with a surety of a similar amount. Carol Derry Katian, Nyeri. Now the strike by workers from the cosmetic company Darling is still on. The workers who are demanding better pay along with the right to be allowed to join the Beauty Products Workers Union continued with demonstrations outside the premises along Lunga Lunga Road in Nairobi's industrial area. Lunga Lunga Road in Nairobi's industrial area was busy for the second day. Employees of Darling Cosmetics Company engaged the police in running battles. They blocked the Lunga Lunga Road, hurling stones at pedestrians and motorists who dared to use the route. The workers began their strike yesterday and have paralyzed operations the company that is famed for hair products. <laughs> They are demonstrating of alleged poor pay and claim that their rights have been violated, chanting slogans and waving placards with messages to the management. The workers accused the company of overworking them and paying them way below the required minimum wages, apart from denying them rights to join unions. Efforts to reach the management for a comment were fruitless. Agnes Plenda for KTN News Desk. We apologize for that. We will take that story again now. We move on now. Top suspects of the Singapore Thailand illegal ivory seizure a few weeks ago were arraigned before a Mombasa court. A father and his two sons are accused of leading the syndicate that has attracted global focus. KTN's coast reporter Francis Ontuoma now reports. 
That's day afternoon, the world would for the first time come face to face with top suspects of the Singapore Thailand illegal ivory scissor of between March and April. A father and his two sons were brought before Mombasa High Court to answer to charges of trading in the illegal business that shocked the globe. Mohammed Abdurrahman Sheikh, a Kenyan with vast business connections. His sons are alleged to be key players, and they are Abdurrahman Mahmoud and Sheikh Mohammed Abdurrahman. Arraigned before Chief Magistrate Susan Shitobi, the prosecution was to pray for more time to consolidate its evidence base. And perhaps to sum the high interest this case has so far attracted, at the Kenya Post Authority headquarters, the Parliamentary Committee on Environment and Natural Resources was on a grilling mission as state agencies were brought under sharp focus to explain the overseas seizure. We are not going to stop at nothing until we make sure that our wildlife is saved from the, 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 the poachers. We have identified uh, weak area, areas, we have uh, identified gaps that are making our port uh, an easy target for the smugglers. Reports say the highly priced ivory valued at millions of shillings was seized in the two countries. Singapore media outlets indicating that the shipment consisted of 1,783 pieces of raw ivory tusks, rhinoceros horns, and 22 canine teeth of African big cats. The package concealed as tea leaves. Tukaona ni lazima kama wajibu wetu kisheria na kulingana ni mifungo na miundo ya, uh, ya, ya bunge kuwa tuje, tukae na wale wanahosika katika vitengo mbalimbali, KPA, uh, KWS, KRA, ili watupatie undani wanamna na njie ambazo hii mali ama hivi vifaa vwa nyama vimefika nje. Questions on how the huge shipment will leave the port of Mombasa unnoticed and where the ever was smuggled from are some of the hard questions that authorities will be hard pressed to answer. The Singapore Thailand Caesars now sheds a sharp spotlight on various state corporations and of keen interest to investigators will be to identify if indeed the Kenya Ports Authority is playing conduit to smugglers. Francis Ontomwa, KTN, Mombasa. Tumakweni now, County Governor Professor Kivuda Kibwana appeared before the Mohamed Nyaogale Dissolution Commission. In his testimony, Kibwana claimed that the County Assembly, through the Speaker Stephen Gelu, has been scheming to impeach him on grounds that is not medically fit to run the county. He further accused members of the County Assembly of hindering the development agenda of Makweni County by wasting public funds. Kibwana also alleged that the move to have him impeached is part of a revenge mission by the members of the County assembly after he failed to adhere to their demands. There is an environment created so that if I will not do what some of the people in the assembly want in terms of the allowing a part of money, uh, it will not be possible for me to work. And eventually, uh, because that's also what they say in the meetings, that this government is not working. So if it happens last year, it happens second year, if not it happens this third year, then it's, it's easy to say that this government is not working. Therefore, another government who is amenable to the ways of some of the leadership. Uh, more than 12 brands of counterfeit liquor were nabbed at Nairobi's Tasia estate last evening. The operation led by head of Interpol in Kenya, Vitalis Okumu, was carried out at a rental premises used as a manufacturing point for the liquor. The fake beer had labels of well-known brands. Yeah, 
Now, the Salaries and Remuneration Commission has launched the Public Sector Remuneration and Benefits Policy Framework, a document that will guide the ongoing efforts to lower the public wage bill. The wage bill has ballooned to 458 billion shillings annually. The policy document is aimed at harmonizing pay and value of work delivered by public servants to ensure that salaries are commensurate with the productivity of government workers. Now, the policy is also set to introduce stringent measures to govern productivity through incentives for exemplary performance and monitoring of poor delivery. The number of civil servants is estimated at 680,000 people spread across the national and county governments. The inequalities and disparities in remuneration and benefits payable in the public sector have been a major cause of dissatisfaction and has led to frequent industrial unrest. In order to address these challenges, the public sector remuneration and benefits policy was anchored on the main constitution principles and the SRC Act 2011. The policy we are launching today underscores the need to ensure that there are incentives for workers to actively pursue improvements in their productivity and performance. Such incentives will provide rewards for public servants who perform beyond the set productivity and or performance targets in terms of quantity, quality, efficiency, effectiveness, and timeliness in completion of set tasks or workload. The remuneration and benefits policy has borrowed best practices from Finland, Malaysia, Singapore, South Africa, Rwanda, Botswana, as well as Ghana. These countries recognize the pivotal role of objectivity and equitable setting compensation as a catalyst on the human capital that drives the systems and processes, service delivery, customer satisfaction, and overall impact on our society. The FIFA Women's World Cup gets underway in Canada from tomorrow and is poised to be the biggest edition of the competition yet. The tournament has been expanded to 24 teams and will last almost a month, with record crowds expected in every game, in every game rather. When it comes to legends, the women's game has several, but when World Cup holders Japan defend their title in Canada, their squad will include one of the greatest. Women's football on the march in Japan. Tokyo side Belitsa is one of the country's foremost clubs with a dozen national championships to its name. They've taken inspiration from the Japanese national team, who kick-started interest in the women's game after beating North Korea to qualify for the Athens Olympics in 2004. It was a case of the underdog getting one over on the favourite. But also there was a resolute and stubborn spirit shown by the players. And I think that women's football gained in popularity from this moment. Football was already enjoying the aftermath and legacy of the 2002 FIFA World Cup, which Japan hosted with South Korea. And the women's team soon went from strength to strength, culminating in victory on the biggest stage four years ago. The current popularity of the female team and the fact that young women dream of playing for their country stems from the World Cup win in 2011 in Germany. The Nadashiko, as Japan are known, are among the favorites to win this year's World Cup in Canada and can count on a loyal fan base. I love women's football more than men's, which I don't watch much. I feel the women have a greater love for the game, for the ball. There are 30,000 registered female players in Japan, and success in Canada could well lead to yet more enthusiasm for football in the land of the rising sun. Well, that's all we had for you on Newsdesk this afternoon. My name is Najmi Smile.